Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So, I haven't filmed a video in a very long time. I'm busy life, okay? <laughs> I've been busy with school, I work way too much and I'm also getting braces. You know, just to bring that, put that out there. So the next video you're gonna see of me is probably gonna be me with braces. But, but that, yeah. I'm really not looking forward to that at all, but okay. So in this video, I'm going to talk y'all through um, what I did to get my curly hair to be curly. Again, it's like still wet because I just washed it. Um, but I'm just going to show you, not really show you, but what I used and what I did to get my really damaged, damaged hair to not be as damaged anymore because I'm still trying to transition so I thought this was a really good video to make and someone commented on my last video that they would like to see that so you know okay so I'm gonna start with the basics this is gonna sound so cliche but like you have to cut your hair you have to cut your hair it doesn't have to like Let's say your hair is damaged to here and you just all cut it off. You don't have to do that. If you're comfortable with doing that, do it. But if you're not, you shouldn't. How I did it was like, it was damaged, all of it. And I cut, but my voice is going away. What is that? So what I did is I cut at least this much of my hair off. I don't know if you can really see that. About this much. And then I didn't go for about three to four months or so. <laughs> maybe longer, maybe shorter. But because of that, it looked like it was growing. It wasn't growing more. But it does look like it's growing more. Because if your hair is very damaged, it breaks off every time you wash and brush it. It just breaks off so much. And then when most of it is already gone, it breaks off less. So it actually you can actually see that it's growing. To where if it keeps breaking off, it's going to stay the same length, if you know what I mean. So that's the first thing you should really do you should really cut it like it doesn't have to be at once just take a little bit of time like cut it piece by piece but you have to cut it if you want to actually get somewhere the next thing is do not i repeat do not wash your hair every single day i used to straight up hop in a shower every morning and wash it you should not do that it dries it out so much <laughs> like i saw when I stopped washing my hair every single day like I went to three times a week to two times a week and I just saw that it became more healthy and more bouncy and just more curly like even the dead pieces became more like a wave than like a straight ass piece down the middle of my hair so just do not wash it every single day and that you can see a lot of difference with that and cutting it, it was like that's really such a big difference Next, deep condition it at least once a week. In the beginning, like I don't deep condition my hair once a week anymore. Don't do it every single week anymore. Like I still do it a lot, but just not every single week anymore. Deep conditioning really moisturizes your hair. And if you do it every single week, like in a month, you're gonna see that your hair is shining way more than it's used to. That that's like the one thing that really really helped to me like deep conditioning and not washing it every day that really helped me because I don't know my hair just was a mess and once I started deep conditioning it just was glowy and shiny and I got way more compliments because I never used to get compliments because it was dead as hell like it was burnt to the max so I'm really happy that I found out about deep conditioning and y'all should be doing like you should deep condition please deep condition okay I think I've said it enough that you like have that imprinted in your brain don't brush your hair when it's dry like as I said before your hair when it's really damaged it breaks off and you can't see length because it is growing it's just not can't see it because like everything that 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 I can't speak today everything that is dead keeps breaking off slowly so if you brush it dry it breaks even more and you also pull your hair out of your scalp so when you brush it dry it's gonna be very frizzy and it's 
just don't do it. Do not use heat. I think that's a very obvious one. Do not do it. I used to straighten my hair a lot, like every single day, and then it was straightened and it would frizz up because obviously it's very damaged, so it wouldn't stay straight. So I'd go over it every day. Don't do that. You can straighten it once in a while, but don't. And also, like, I'm not gonna say do not use any heat because if I someone would say that to me, I'd be like, what? No. Like, no. <laughs> Like, just try to do it like once half a year, once a year, but not every single month, every single day. Like, that's too much. And with just in the time that you're transitioning and you're trying and you're seeing actual, okay, actual, actual like progress, just don't use heat for the first year, I would say. Um, and after that you can start using your blow dryer again. I mean, you can use your blow dryer, but then I'm cold, which is going to take a little bit longer. But you can still do that, but just don't use a straightener or any heat at all for the few, for, dang, for the first year or at least the first six months, six months. Yeah, just don't do it because it's not, it's so bad, like. That's also one of those cliches, but it's so true. I'm gonna move on to the products that I used and that helped. Not all of them, just some of them. So first, a white, white tooth comb. I mean, that out. This is just necessary. This is like an essential thing that you should have as a curly hair person, like. It's so much more easy and gentle than a brush. Like, you can use a wet brush as well. Um, and you could just use your fingers. But this just, I don't know. You sh just, as a curly hair person, you should have one. It's not expensive. It's good for you. <laughs> then next, I have here this Jamaican Black Castor Oil Strength and Restore and treat Treatment Mask. This is the dusty it's not dusty this is conditioned no whatever this is the i really honest this is like the only deep conditioner i've ever used <laughs> it has no sulfate it's no parabens no all of those things there's also no animal testing so completely vegan it's like all of that um it has what does it even have Mixed with shea butter, peppermint, apple cider vinegar. It helps nourish and renew natural chemical processed or heat styled hair. So it's good for every kind of damage. Well, it doesn't really matter whatever you damaged your hair with. If it's heat, you relaxed it. Whatever it is, this will work for it. Um, it also smells so good. Like It smells like the leave-in conditioner. That's also a really great product. You should use that too. If I mean, it's very nourishing. This is just a very good leave-in conditioner. Like you can even use it as conditioner. Just like wash your hair and then leave this in for the rest of your shower, and then wash it at the end. And it makes such a big difference. I can I can see a difference when I use this and when I use a normal conditioner. So a deep conditioner. Uh, the She Silk Infusion. The I'm not gonna read that. This I use this when I straighten my hair. For the rest, I only use it sometimes when my hair is really dry. I kind of boost it in or ram when I'm going to like blow dry, when I'm going to blow dry my hair. I also put this in. Um, this is also not been tested on animals it's amazing it was <laughs> it's paraben free sense per it's free of a lot of stuff <laughs> um this just i don't know when i saw my hair and i have this it just gives a shine to it and it it's not damaged like obviously 
every it doesn't matter what you put in your hair your hair is going to get a little bit damaged every single time but this just helps prevent it from like actual death <laughs> Yeah, this really helps with that. You can also put it in your hair when you're not straightening it. Just if you want to shine or boost, I don't know. This is what I use when I straighten my hair. So if you do want to straighten your hair, use this. <laughs> Thank you. A microfiber towel. If you don't have a microfiber towel, use a cotton t-shirt. Um, I didn't have one for the longest, but now I actually have one and I really like it. I... I don't use towels on my hair in general, like when I didn't have a microfiber towel or I used a cotton t-shirt or I wouldn't use anything. But now I have one. It's really handy. It doesn't make your hair as frizzy as it would with a normal towel. It dries it but not dries it out. So it's just kind of also one of those essentials you really cannot miss. The last product that I can think of right now is a satin pillowcase. Um, I have one right there, like the golden one. That's what I use where I sleep on. Um, that has helped me a lot too because I realized, I realized, I noticed when I would sleep on my normal cotton pillowcases and I would wake up, I used to have to redo my, what am I saying? This sentence is not Right. I noticed when I used to sleep on my cotton pillowcase that's right next to that, um, it would be very frizzy in the morning and it would feel really dry. But then when I would sleep on that, my curl pattern would stay in way better. It would be way less frizzy and less dry. Like obviously it's gonna be frizzy. It depends on who you are and how you sleep because I'm a like I move a lot in my sleep. I twist and turn and that's also kind of like why it's so frizzy. And if you're going to sleep, I recommend, I don't know, it depends on what happened to your hair, how your hair is right now. Because I have that my hair on the inside, see it's a little bit drier and less curly. So I should be sleeping on this, like just on my hair, but I always sleep like my hair up like that. And I do that because then these curls stay curly, like actual beautiful curls. And if I sleep on this, you don't really see that. Um, and also, if you want to sleep with your hair up, use a scrunchie. That's one of the products too, a scrunchie. Like, it's way softer, it doesn't rip your hair out. And just like put it in a pineapple or something. Like, take all your hair, put it in a pineapple. Even if you're long hair, you have long hair, it's still going to help because the only thing you're laying on is this hair nobody's gonna see that so you just take the pineapple out of your hair just as it was the last night you can also use a bonnet I don't use a bonnet I don't have a bonnet but you can also use a silk or satin bonnet or even a satin scarf silk scarf you can use all kinds of things that don't do that I don't sleep in a bonnet bonnet personally um never tried it i might someday try it or not i don't know but i do know that a scrunchie and a satin pillowcase already help a lot that's what i know i for a bonnet you have to go to someone else <laughs> um that were mainly the products that i could think of and then the only thing i still want to say is you need to test on yourself because not everyone has the same curly pattern not every product works well on everybody um youtube helps a lot like it does like there are a few youtubers that i like, really like to watch uh jasmine brown she really helped me Sharia jade and lisette lisetti lisette whatever i don't know um i'm pretty sure her name is lisette and then all lisetti is her youtube name i think um, but those three, I feel like I can re relate to the most, um, with my hair and the products that they use really helps me and what they say really helped me. So you can check those out too, if you have curly hair or a similar pattern to them or I don't know, whatever. But that really helped me just watching YouTube videos and testing a lot. 
like not actually buying a full product and testing it and if it didn't work that was a waste of money like I didn't do that obviously I did like see like mixes and weird stuff like people who would make their own mask for growth and stuff because I used a lot of those weird things that were good for your hair and nourishing nourishing whatever I can't speak today I'm sorry I'm also out of breath I'm sick I really feel like that also really helped me like testing a lot of products and seeing what works on different people to see what I think would work on me um, my holy grail kind of is Shea Moisture right now um, because that's what I started with and I'm still using that I think I started my journey in 2017 I also use a lot of protective hairstyles once in a while you could once in a while braid it. I don't know if they're French braid or Dutch braids, but just braids. <laughs> um, sometimes you could wear a bun or... I don't know. Just something protective, something that's up. When your hair looks a little bit dry, you know, just put it in a protective hair cell and you'll be... I don't know. That kind of helps too. It helps. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Look. It's drying. <laughs> okay. So, that was my video. That was basically everything that I did and that I'm still doing and the products that I use and just tips and tricks for your damaged hair to go natural again, I guess. Um, I hope all of y'all enjoyed this video. I hope you have learn something from this video. I hope you're gonna use some tips that I gave you in this video and I hope it helps you. So if it does, give it a big thumbs up. Leave in the comments down below what do you want to see from me next. I'm talking very fast. <laughs> so comment down below what you want to see from me next. And also comment down below who your inspiration is for your hair because mine are those three people. They really helped me get like go natural basically and tell me also what your favorite product is wait 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 also subscribe you know if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video bye